Dobrý večer. Promiňte mi, že musíme prezentovat v angličtině, protože ještě nemluvím moc česky, jak to bych chtěla. I hope that it isn't a problem. Yeah? <laughs> it should be fine. Uh -huh. Uh, so, dear colleagues, uh, I would like to present uh, some results uh, we obtained in, in the frame of, uh, of, of project, uh, which is called Causes of Decline uh, and a System of Eff Effective Restoration of Priority Habitat Types of uh, Subalpine Grasslands. Um, uh, our uh, one of the main uh, goal of this project is to study uh, the cause of uh, sudden grassland dying events uh, at subalpine range in Yeseniki mountains, which is absorbed during uh, last decade. Uh, and our contribution in this project, uh, our contribution, I mean uh, our small uh, remote sensing group, uh, which is part of the uh, uh, Department for uh, Landscape Ecology of Vukos. <clears throat> so our contribution is um, uh, to provide solution uh, uh, on two main tasks. Uh, the first is to detect uh, the areas of dying grassland at Yeseniki mountain range using remote sensing techniques and to assign its extent in modern times as well as in the past decades. So, um, in other words, uh, to make uh, some retrospective analysis which should provide the answers to the questions when the event uh, did actually start how great was the effect and uh, has the grass been recovering and how fast and so on. And the second task is to create an up-to-date high-resolution map of priority vegetation types at Yeseniki, also using remote sensing techniques. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, Concerning dying grassland detection, the main approach was uh, to calculate spectral indices uh, uh, for non-photosynthetic biomass detection. Uh, spectral indices, it means that uh, some mathematical uh, actions with uh, bands of, of an image. Uh, everybody knows uh, NDVI indexes, so we used uh, similar indexes, uh, but uh, with other bands. <coughs> uh, so for, <coughs> for detecting that grassland, we used uh, three, uh, three sources, imagery sources. One is a uh, <coughs> very uh, extra fine resolution uh, drone image. Uh, resolution is uh, 10 centimeters or even less. Uh, by, uh, made by six band multispectral camera carried by drone. It's a property of our uh, department. Uh, also we used uh, uh, <coughs> uh, Kaisi Sasi a suite of hyperspectral sensors uh, carried by flying, flying laboratory uh, of Czech Globe. So our colleagues from Czech Globe kindly provided us with this data. Uh, you heard about uh, this uh, wonderful uh, flying laboratory uh, today, so we also used uh, its data. <clears throat> and uh, for a retrospective analysis, we used uh, uh, free of charge uh, multispectral images, satellite images such as Sentinel 2 and Landsat. Uh, for <clears throat> uh, input ground data, uh, we uh, collected uh, data in the field, so we <clears throat> used uh, 37 plots. Uh, which represents five vegetation types, or um, not vegetation, but like habitat types, uh, which, is, uh, which are bare soil, uh, dead grassland, and uh, three types of uh, living grassland. <coughs> uh, so it provided us uh, in total almost a million uh, spectral uh, values uh, for analysis. <coughs> Speaking about um, uh, 
sp spectral indices. <coughs> Uh, there are plenty of them uh, which are like, suggested in the literature. Some of them uh, are <clears throat> based on uh, so-called uh, red H band uh, and uh, it uh, shows rather like absence of chlorophyll, so I would say it's like yellowness of vegetation. Some of uh, them are based on short weight infrared uh, bands uh, it's more connecting with uh, water, so it like, shows uh, absence of water or dryness, and other indexes are like, combined, uh, something in the middle. <coughs> uh, and uh, so our task uh, was to, uh, to try as many indices as possible, because they are always uh, depends on very site dependent, the choosing of the right index is site dependent, and uh, also it depends on uh, sensor, what do you have? Uh, so we used, we tried uh, lots of them, maybe tw more than 20, and uh, choose, may, um, calculated uh, the statistics uh, uh, based on it, uh, our ground plots, uh, and to, uh, we uh, have to choose uh, the best one, which uh, performs better to divide this de dead grassland from uh, bare soil and other uh, and living grassland. Uh, so he here you can see um, histograms on three of them. Uh, so one is uh, short wave infrared based and the other are uh, red age based and so uh, for visualization uh, we used so called lci it's leaf chlorophyll index which uh, provides the best results uh, so here you can uh, see <coughs> uh, uh, a fragment of uh, our like map showing the location of dry grassland uh, showing in uh, purple color <clears throat> it's uh, like up to date data for for the previous year <clears throat> and for uh, retrospective analysis we used uh, uh, until from 2015 until now we used uh, sentinel 2 imagery and uh, okay, and uh, uh, so uh, we use the same index LCI. Uh, before we uh, uh, did the um, like correlation and regression analysis to pro to just to transfer one sensor to another. So this is the result for um, uh, based on Sentinel two imagery, and. Uh, uh, Unfortunately, we cannot use uh, Sentinel-2 uh, for um, before uh, 2015 because it uh, was launched just in 2015. So uh, all we can use it was Landsat, but unfortunately Landsat don't have a, don't have a red age band. So we uh, have to uh, transfer our uh, research to another index. Uh, so also we used, uh, we tried uh, which one will be better. Uh, so we made regression between uh, LCI data uh, using uh, 2015 as a proxy because uh, it was, uh, I I I there were available all type of images of sensors, I mean. Uh, Sentinel-2, Landsat-7, uh, and Landsat-8 uh, for this year. So we can uh, go use it and, as a proxy to, to make this regression and mm, to transfer into uh, another index. So in the final, we have uh, like a time series of uh, maps, uh, which uh, uh, shows uh, the location of the dead grassland um, spots. Uh, so, 
uh, there are uh, two locations, main locations. One is the Brilichna mountain, and the first dying event uh, was in 2012, so in 2011 we have nothing. In 2012 uh, we have uh, uh, like huge uh, dying event, so it's uh, more than uh, 300 and a half uh, or three and a half uh, hectares. Uh, and uh, so you can see from year to year, uh, it's like um, slowly but recovering. Grass, grassland is recovering. And another, <coughs> another uh, location is Velkimai. Uh, it was, uh, the event was in uh, 2019. <coughs> and, and this data, data completely matches uh, that we were told by local nature reserve employees. So they told that uh, it was like two gra uh, in one in 2012 and the second in 2019. So uh, we can see it from space the same. <coughs> and uh, there are uh, some like uh, areas. So for Brilich now, for Velkemai and Total, uh, so uh, there were two massive dying events, and dying of grasslands was like sudden and massive, uh, simultaneously covering the comparatively large areas, more than three hectares each. Uh, ho however, uh, they were located in particular places, not so, so not widespread, <clears throat> and uh, mm, over time the grass has been gradually recovering. Uh, so what are we are uh, going to do further? <coughs> uh, so now we are in the middle of the project. So the, the, the uh, last part will be dedicated to uh, creating some model. We uh, are going to include uh, into it this data we obtained on uh, distribution of dead grassland. Also uh, to add some uh, special data and some indexes, for example, standardized precipitation evaporation index uh, based on long-term meteorological data. Uh, by the way, uh, this is the graph, uh, and you can see that this is of this index, and you can see that last uh, several years it was a severe drought, uh, really, so it, this index was negative. And uh, we also are going to put in this model in situ measurements of soil moisture and temperature. Uh, also, we can we have uh, lidar data uh, based, so we, we we can make a digital elevation model based on the lidar data to estimate the uh, snow cover uh, as a source of water. Also topography, topographic wetness index, soil structure and depth, and so on. <coughs> uh, so uh, we hope that uh, <coughs> it like uh, uh, so we could in the final uh, understand uh, that cause of that dying events. And just uh, two slides on the second uh, large part of work, uh, which is currently uh, continuing, but we, also, we obtained some previous results, uh, vegetation mapping. Uh, also, we use uh, these uh, very uh, high-resolution images uh, of our drone and Kasi Sasi. The flight was done in this year in July, so we just uh, obtained these image, images and processed uh, in some way a little bit. So this is uh, the um, legend for map, so what we are going to map. Uh, the, um, this map was, this legend was uh, proposed by uh, photosologist, botan botanist, Radim uh, Hedl, who is the uh, principal investigator in this project. So. Uh, the, you can see, if you can see, I don't know. Uh, there are uh, several types of uh, uh, grassland vegetation, uh, short stemmed, high stemmed, and so on. Uh, Borovka, uh, Vrzes, and uh, so on and so on. 
but uh, in the process we even uh, can <coughs> uh, uh, make this uh, list uh, even even larger because we can uh, divide some uh, some types of biotopes into smaller ones. So this is input image. We collected uh, the field data. Uh, this year we collected almost a thousand uh, points, uh, reference points in the field. Uh, so then we cre crea create uh, like training polygons for machine learning algorithms, algorithms or supervised classification and so on. And in the final we <coughs> Uh, can uh, obtain the classified image, which is a uh, vegetation map. Uh, so, thank you very much for attention. <clears throat> thank you very much for the interesting presentation. I think, should you be here yesterday, we have, I think, three or four presentations also dealing with uh, uh, a long range or uh, remote sensing in general with uh, also vegetation indexes and so on. Mm -hmm. So it's really fall into the theme of the conference. And we have one question only, presumably that everyone <laughs> wants to go, you know, for the for the dinner. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you know why these grasslands are dying? Uh, and we don't I know uh, exactly because uh, the, the whole project dedicated to this uh, problem. So it is, um, we cannot say it now why, um, but uh, yeah, maybe in a year we will develop this model and we, we find this answer because it's something unusual, I think. Hopefully it's more sophisticated answer than drought. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. It's 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 surely it's more complicated, and I think its problem is um, very complicated and very complex because it also looks like not dying. Um, you can you you saw the, maybe the photos. Uh, it's not like uh, grassland just not growing, but uh, the biomass cannot uh, dis dis distract. Uh, so. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Something with the structure. So, so, so there might be other problems. causes as well, yeah. of course. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, and um, just a second, I would like to thank uh, in final to Touch Air uh, for their supporting projects to uh, support Ukrainian scientists and in, by joining uh, them into current uh, projects. So that's why I'm and my family and me we are here and. Uh, are able to live and work in this uh, friendly and safe environment. So th thank you for that.